it. But first in our Joburg studio, we have the author of an anthology of short stories, one of which, is, which has lent its uh, n- title to the title of the book. It's called The Weight of a Feather, and it's Judy Crome who is the author, and we've got her in Joburg. Hi, Judy. Hello, Nancy. Nice to have you with us. Um, am I right? Me. Is it The Weight of a Feather? That's the title of one of the stories, and subsequently the title of the book. That is correct, yes. Okay. You don't only write short stories, though. I think you're a novelist as well. Yes. Um, novelists are my first love. Novels are my first love, and um, I wrote Dancing in the Shadows of Love a few years ago, and then time and circumstances changed, and so I, br- I brought out a book of poetry, and and then I decided to bring out this book of short stories, and um, that's how I ended up writing short stories. Do you, would it be fair, a fair question to ask you which you prefer, or is it just appropriate to the time? Um, I think... I think at heart I am definitely a, a novel writer. I prefer writing the longer stories, but it was appropriate at the time for me to write the poetry and the short stories, and I surprised myself with them, and I thoroughly enjoyed them, and they seem to be um, getting good responses, and you know, maybe I discovered something in myself that I didn't know I had. Well, maybe it's the material. You know, I've very often heard, and I don't know if you can verify this, that publishers often say short stories don't sell. I don't know if that's true. What do you think? Um, I think that's, I I think that's true. Here. I think it's true at the moment. I don't think poetry and short stories sell as well as um, no- novels do. People tend to want to lose themselves in the longer stories. But I, I sometimes think that short stories are maybe starting to come into their own. Not only short stories per se, but shorter novels. Because you just look around you and you see how busy the world is. Mm. And, you know, not many people have, you have to be a really hardened, hardcore reader to sit down and read an 800-page novel when you're rushing around doing a million other things. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of your general readers in their busy lives, and there's so much um, stuff competing for the attention. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's um, games and all of that. So... To find time to read longer books is, I think, becoming more difficult. And short stories and shorter novels, I'm hoping, are going to start um, finding their own little niche. Yes, absolutely. It's so true, isn't it? I mean, all the texting and the tweeting and everything we do is sort of so much more in sound bites. You would think that people would embrace the short story. So whoever knows what it is. But from the writer's point of view... Yes. Do you, do you know what is, when you find a piece of material or a particular topic that you're really interested in, do you think short story, novel, do, do you know immediately or do you have to get started and then decide? No, no. I, my creative process, I know which is a short story and which is a novel because I tend to be quite a slow novel writer because I brood and I brood and, and then I start writing and then I sort of get faster and faster. But I'll read something in the newspaper um, and then that will flash an image into my mind and then all of a sudden a little short story will pop out of that. The length of the short story, when I start writing it, I don't know. Sometimes it ends up half a page. Some of them have ended up 10 pages, 15, 20 pages. It sort of takes on its own life once I start writing it. But I will start with an idea that I know is only going to be a short story. Yes, and I imagine that idea needs to be, well, that that that, uh, that plot, that theme needs to be pretty focused. Can yes. you, amongst the, your anthology, which I think has got quite a lot of stories in it, is it 45? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's about 44 stories, 40, which is quite a lot. Can you yes. sort of synthesise one of them for us? Well, um, the one that um, the the title one is has proved quite a popular one because the Huffington Post picked it up. And I think it's because it's got universal appeal. It's about uh, it's the story of a young girl who had pet chickens. And um, I don't want to give too much away, but at the beginning of the story, she closes herself off to love because of something that happens with the chickens. And at the end of the story, she opens herself up to love again. And I think that is what appealed to the editors of the Huffington Post. And it seems to be appealing to a lot of the readers. But what I find most interesting in the response I've had to this book is every single reader and every single reviewer seems to have their own favourites. Um, I've had one reviewer say, oh, the Blue Mountains, which is the story of a, a young woman in a rural area. She's the chief's daughter, and um, she wants to be chief, and her brothers don't want her to be. But she passes all the tests, and so her father supports her, and he sends her off to train as a chief. 
and it's the story of how she comes back down from the mountains and um, claims her power back from her brothers. I've had some people say, oh, that's my favorite story. Hmm. Then I've had other people say, um, Umbrella in the Snow is their favorite story. And that is a story about a woman who, um, she was a sort of daddy's girl, and he always protected her, and he gave her everything she wanted, and then she got married, and she sort of hid from reality. She hid from her own emotional nature, and she had an imaginary umbrella, which she thought protected her. And eventually there comes a stage where she... She thinks it's a snowstorm, but it's actually her emotions are starting to become so intense that she can't hide from, it, from them anymore, and her whole world collapses. And I've had other people sort of relate to that. Mm. And I think that is what's important about the short story. Do they come from the, just the ones that you're describing? Do they come from your imagination or from events? I mean, I imagine a short story writer would be walking around sort of thinking, uh, taking little mental snapshots of, of possible stories. I mean, the girl with the imaginary umbrella. Yeah. Where did such a story come from? Um, well, the umbrella in the snow came from just my imagination. I actually don't know where it came from. I, I had this image. I think I opened an umbrella in the rain, and I thought, gosh, an umbrella in in the rain, in the snow, and then sort of the mind just started wondering, and then I thought, how would that work? And then I looked up the symbolism of an umbrella, and um, the umbrella is symbolic of withdrawal and protectiveness. And, you know, sheltering behind the umbrella symbolizes hiding from reality. And from there, it just sort of started growing. But then another short story called The Place of the Dove, um, that one was based on a newspaper article about uh, someone in the township in Alexandra had nearly died from eating food that was dumped, that had gone past the sell-by date. And the place of the doves is about this guy who thinks it's his lucky day because he finds this whole pile of food and he takes it home and he starts selling it. But um, the people are sort of rushing, taking it and getting all excited because he's selling this cheap food. And then the doves start to come and picking the food and they died in front of him. Oh. And then he thought, oh, goodness, you know, and then, of course, they realized that the food was bad and he was saved. And after that, because he thought his ancestors had abandoned him because, obviously, he couldn't find work in the townships and everything. And then when the ancestors saved him by making the doves eat the food before the people, he then felt, oh, well, he's a lucky man. So the place of the doves came from a real-life story. And oh, gosh. So, uh, you know, so it just yeah. depends. Well, I mean... Now I know is a story that actually came from um, 1 Corinthians 13, because, you know, it says there, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And it ends off with that famous, and now abide faith, open charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And the whole story now I know is all about sort of working through the the archaic meaning of charity, not as almsgiving, but as divine compassion and love. And the main protagonist, Simon, um, he's sort of stuck in a stage in his marriage where all his dreams and ambitions, he's had to, he's had to put them on hold to bring up the family and support the wife and that. And then he meets this young girl, Charity, and she brings him to life again and, and it teaches him how to have compassion not only for himself and his frailties, but compassion for everybody mm. else. So, so yes, I'm just thinking that the start, so if anybody is thinking, oh, I could write a short story, the inspiration is out there. You just have to keep your, your mind wide open and your eyes definitely. and ears wide open. So the start can come from anywhere. But just, just lastly, Judy, the ending, I suppose I'm thinking of Roald Dahl, you know, all his short yes. stories that always have a little chick at the end where you think, oh, really? Yes. Well, I didn't see that coming. Yes. Do you, do you know where the stories are going when you start? And do you, does there have to be a little... Um, you know, something at the end that you think, wow, well, that's, that's it. You know where it's finishing. And Nancy, again, I think it depends on the story. Some stories I start with an image. Some stories I start with the ending. Some stories I start with a the theme. And um, a lot of my stories um, do have a little twist in the end. I do try to make my stories, no matter how dark the stories are, and some of the stories are quite dark, I've been told, um, but I try to offer through that darkness. The, the main thing that I try and do in my writing is that at the end of the story, whether it's a short story or a long story or a poem, is I try to show that, you know, the human spirit, we have an amazing capacity to fight our way through darkness. There's always that light, there's always that hope at the end. And I like, my short stories, I think I've managed to do that, except for one I was told that, you know, people said that doesn't have a happy ending. So the ending may not be a traditional happy ending, but it is an ending that offers hope, that offers mm -hmm. inspiration. 
So I suppose it's up to each and every writer to decide how it's going to end. And the reader, I think. Um, I yes. think the reader yes. brings their own veil of perceptions to, yeah. what they, to what they read and what they see on the page. Do you? Absolutely very lastly. Very often people imagine that, you know, you can... St- I mean, the, the writing a short story is where you start. A bit like writing a children's book is where you start. I'm going to be a writer, so I'm going to write a children's book or a, a short story because that'll be easy before I move on to the novel. Yes. It, is that... True? Is it the easy way to start? I think it's probably the sensible way to start, Nancy. I I put the cart before the horse, I think, when I started with my novel. I I probably would have gained more experience if I'd done the short stories first and the poetry first and played around with that. Um, So I think probably a sensible place to start is to play around with short stories because you've got a short contained character arc, you've got a short contained story arc, and it's easier to learn how to manage those than it is starting with a full-length novel. Well, thank you for that very wise advice. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And very best of luck with the, the novel that you're researching, which I believe is all about child murders. So mm-hmm. very best of luck with that yes, one. Yes, Thank you. Quite and, uh, depressing. Yes, I, was I, I, hope, say. I hope to bring hope out in that story I as well. I hope you do. And our, our children of South Africa need all the hope that they can get. Absolutely. Lovely. Thank you, Judy. Nancy, Thanks. thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Okay, Judy Croom, and she's the author of a book of many short stories, about 40-odd short stories, called The Weight of a Feather, and it's published by Astar Press. The Weight of a Feather, published by Astar Press. So, short stories it is we're talking about.